Hello again, everyone, and welcome to Jerry's Old Guy Review. And we're looking at the HG P415 today. Did I need this truck in my life? Well, I thought I didn't. But you know what? I'm starting to notice that this truck may be going away. So they offered it in this style, and they also had it with a different style. If you don't remember, we'll show you the picture with the fancy push bar and the fancy roof rack. To me, it just seemed like it was too much. It has it had a light and sound kit, or a light kit, that I really liked the way all the lights were on it. Not all the lights were represented that are on an actual Hummer H1. But meanwhile, the sound kit was the exact same sound kit that is in the 802, the 801, the 602. Yes, there are some different sound profiles, but were they that big of a difference that, you know, I went through and changed all mine? No. The number one sound setting is the best one, which if you can call the HG sound system good, you take what you can get. But now this, unlike the, oh, what was the other one? The, the military style, hardback, turtleback as I used to call them in my day, that one was a little bit pricey. And, you know, I just didn't, it wasn't 112 scale. It wasn't fitting with the new motif of military vehicles in the fleet. It was 110 scale. So HG said. And I figured, hmm, okay. Well, let's just see how this looks with the other rigs. Well, before we get into this, let me just see how well we can stick that. So, anyone who's seen a real H1 Hummer knows that they're huge. So let's just take something that's more in its wheelhouse. The MST. The MST are small compared to the other 110 scales. So, while this one is more 1.9 scale, that Hummer I'm going to put solidly at maybe 11.5 scale because it's a little bit bigger than where the, uh, well, let's just stop and back up because now I just got giving you bad information. The MST is more like 10 scale, true 10 scale. And the Hummer is more like 11 scale because you put it up with a true 10 scale and it's still too small, but it's too big to go with the other HGs. So it's a fiddly size compared to the other trucks. So I guess, yes, we'll guess we can just drive it around with the other smaller scale trucks. Maybe it'll look good with some Tamiya trucks, Tamiya, whatever we're calling it these days. But back to the truck. So just like any of us who have gotten the HG 801, 802 Hemets, you know that they have an open diff. This one's no exception. But meanwhile, with the 602, they included pins. And for anyone who has seen my pin video on those, I learned a lesson with this one. This truck also comes with the pins, but 
I have been extensively driving it. I drove it once with no pins in it, whole battery pack. It got stuck everywhere. Any sort of terrain that made the truck off center, these wheels would just sit out here and spin. The other one wouldn't even help get it out. So any kind of cattywampusness, this truck, horrible. But you put the pins in it, whole nother animal. Now it's got lock diffs and it is fun to drive. But meanwhile, because it's an open diff, when you pull the plugs out to put the pins in, like I showed you guys in my 602 video, you sometimes have to spin the wheels because you're going to have the outer wheel or the outer part of the differential has one part of the hole in it. And then the inner part has the other hole. So you have to fiddle with the wheels a little bit because some of you commented that the holes didn't line up. Go back in there and fiddle with it because this thing, I thought I was in the same boat. I got my screwdriver out. I was trying to clean off the grease so I could see the hole, which was not present until I magically moved it on the bench and then the hole appeared. So little tidbit for this truck and a little tidbit for the 602. If you guys want to revisit that. Now, as in all HG's models, this truck is exceptionally detailed. This truck, we're going to go around it. I just can't believe how good it was with the details. I've worked on Hummers. I've been underneath them. I've been under the hood. Yeah, I can point out a few things. But meanwhile, they really hit the nail on the head. And as usual, HG's books, at least for the breakdown of the vehicle itself, I mean, you can't. You can't go wrong with how good they are. But let me just show you in here. So I can guess you can imagine what I got in mind because the top is removable. So I've got plans in the detail world for this vehicle. I am not going to go with that weird thing because, you know, like I said earlier, I don't think the support is around for this truck now. I have a whole list in this book of parts. I can't find the light kit. I can't find the sound kit, which I'll show you where the issue is going to be with the light kit. But let's just, you know, let me get out my fancy tool first actually this one oh, that's a little bit beefier let's get the uh something a little more gentle these door handles which any of you who have seen the other truck metal door handles metal hooks and clips this thing is beefy this is almost 14 pounds Incredible, in my opinion. Well, let's go look at this, though. So, woo, whoa, I don't want everyone getting seasick. So, first of all, we're going to get under the hood, but look at that for us detail guys. Fully functioning hood release. Functioning doors. When these are clipped... That thing does not want to move. Nice little little bare bones. Especially considering there's no door handle release. But these windows, you can take those out. Hell, there's the, there's the screws. You can take the uh, doors off. Nice little dual tone seats. This is pretty neat in my book. It's got reclining seats. 
This side is not the impeccable side to look in. Back door, same thing. The seats, I'm probably going to see if I can, when I take the body off, if I can move these seats back. They seem excessively close. But there you go inside. Look at that. Let's get this thing out of the way. You've got clips to high, tie things down. You've got cup holders, vent, vents. Details abound. Same thing back here. I pre-open these. One, this is fiddly. So, you've got this cover to hold your battery pack down. Well, that works, I guess, if you've got a nickel metal. Oh, more details. Look at that little storage pockets. Because in these grooves is where the real battery sits. So I got to get in there and take that out too. Because that's where a lipo pack would go. It slides into these little compartment. All mine are big, so it only goes to that first lip. It's weird. Oh, and I didn't open this side. Let's go over here and open that one up. And the other one. There we go. So, we're going to flip this over, but this is an extra bumper you get. Let's get that out of the way. You get, there's the military style panel bumper is under this. So you can just take this part off if you want to use a loop style. Kind of nice, gives you an extra option. And of course, if you guys have never seen these before, they have a full exhaust. We're going to go in there. Let's see how well we can see in that back seat on this side. Same concept. But now, let's go up front. Same thing. Reclining seats. Moving door handles. The shifters don't work, but that would be nice if they didn't. You've got all your shifters, all your vents. The dash detail is incredible. Oh, the park and brake moves. The brake pedal moves. Oh, I guess maybe I can use my little pick, huh? Crazy. But once again, that's the detail. Let's. You have to lock, you have to shut the doors. Let's get the other one over here. Never have to worry about your little army guys falling out or your civilian guys. But we're going back to this side. Now, the front bumper is just a friction clip in. It just clips. And boom! This cover, except for, well, in the civilian world, you know, they were pretty basic with the engine parts. But the clips, which unfortunately are plastic, because in real life, you could actually lift the vehicle up with those. Now we're going to try this because there's two little clips. And the engine cover folds up. And that's where, this is where the sound system and the lights, everything would be. You've got a little extra plug-in you can use if you want to wire in your own lights. So... There's a lot of room in there. You've got your speed control and the motors back in here. I'm going to be taking this whole body off to just check it out. We'll see what kind of more room we may have in there. Air, air intake is actually metal. But now let's... Because my owner's book shows me, let me show you where the fiddle's going to come in. So, five mil lights, five mil lights. One of these is the, the night driving lights, and 
you know, you don't need all those. So those are easy to do. Headlight holes, way too big. So what I found in the owner's book is this is supposed to be LEDs. And here's two lights, marker lights on the side. One of them's, one of them's a reflector. Let's go over there. So this is actually the marker light. This is just supposed to be a reflector on a military style one. So this is going to be fiddly to try to put a light in here. Because I'm sure where this light deal, this, this screw hole is, is where the LED probably plugs into that. So that is going to be interesting, but I've already got plans for everything else, so we will see what we can do up. Oh, well, let's go back to where lights are not, or are supposed to be, but aren't. So right here, this piece right here is supposed to be three red lights. This is supposed to be your turn signal, and that's supposed to be a reflector, but again... These lights are strangely orange and again, supposed to be LED. Same thing on the side. Again, with these are all orange. These should be red. Fronts are orange, but just nitpicking. I can get a red light and put it in there. But now for those of you, oh, let me show you how nice they made this. So this is the pinnel hook. That's made on the back of this bumper. You remove that off. And you can use a different style trailer if you have such a thing. Now, just the framework. Framework, dead on accurate. A-arms. Differential housing. Beautiful. You can see I've already tried it. Tried to rock crawl a bit. Now, the two-speed transmission, I'm not really finding the difference between the two. It seems to be quite peppy, and it's quite peppy either way, in high gear or low gear. But, here we go. Met oh, shit. Metal, muffler, exhaust pipes, all metal. Once again, front, dead on. The way they rigged up the servo, let's see if we can get in kind of, that is one heck of a nice angle for where that sits. Yeah, you could get something to hit it. So, because I have plans for it, it does not have, I didn't put the mirrors on it, it comes with stickers, let's look, here we go. You've got the Hummer stickers. You've got the air ride system, the CTIS, which I'm not putting these big red things on there. They look goofy. And then you've got your mirrors with actual glass material. You've got some extra hardware to mount a license plate bracket. Not really worried about that, but... But other than that, the detail on this truck is fabulous and I don't know how long it's going to take or be out still but this truck actually was only $400 and yes John Leard was the only one who noticed this on the shelf the other day and John's already given me a, an idea for a shock upgrade so we're going to try that when we have it all apart just to see what's going on So, here it is. Incredible detail. Some of, the, some of the design was a little poor. Chap myself that I got the, uh, didn't find a light kit anywhere. But, this is a project for winter. And we are going to make this as super civilian rig as I can make it. So, until the next one, this is Jerry. Old Guys Review.